Hey guys, Buildzoid here, and today we're going to be talking about the VRM on the X370 Gaming K5 from Gigabyte. So I've run a, I've run some testing on it, you know, not like a full test suite, because I don't really have a full test suite. I basically went and decided, okay, let's see if I'm, if this is viable for my daily system. And I like the VRM electrically, which I, I'm, I'm surprised about. Electrically, it's very, like, it's well behaved, it can do a 3.9 gigahertz overclock, and it can do a 3.9 gigahertz overclock at 1.37 volts. Like, I didn't think this chip would run 3.9 at 1.37 volts when I, like, when I started Intel Burn Test and the voltage dropped to that level, I was like, okay, we're gonna crash in three, two, one. Why aren't we crashing at? And it would proceed to run for another 250 seconds before it was shut down. So I reduced the clock to the 3.85 and it would run for 250 seconds and cr uh, and shut down. So I would re reduce the clock to 3.28 uh, 3.825 I would run for, run for 250 seconds and it would shut down. So I would reduce the clock to 3.8 and it ran for 256 50 seconds and shut down again. And I didn't change the voltage the entire time, so I'm sitting there going like Nah, there's I, there's a different issue here. So I slapped a fan on the VRM and suddenly it stopped shutting down. Isn't that amazing? That's right, this motherboard has working over temperature protection. That's a good thing. The bad thing is, it hits it, like, constantly if you don't do something about VRM airflow. And the good news is, if you have this board, it's actually really easy to figure out if you're doing the right thing or wrong thing in terms of airflow, because it has working temperature sensors, because it has working over temperature protection. If you use Hardware Info 64, you can check the MOSFET temperature sensors, and they do report actual MOSFET temperature, so they're really good. The cutoff point is 125 degrees centigrade, so if you exceed that temperature, the board shuts down. Um, but as long as you stay below that, the board won't shut down. And the good news is, the capacitors and like like the capacitors which are really temperature sensitive unlike mosfets uh are basically always going to be like 20 to even 40 degrees below the temperature of the actual mosfets themselves so when the mosfets were hitting 125 the capacitors were at a uh, hundred when the when i put a fan on the vrm and the mosfets were hitting ar right around 105 degrees the capacitors were hitting around 60 to 70. So, ultimately, you know, this VRM suffers from terrible cooling. But other than that, it actually, like, it's good. You can overclock on this if you put deal with the whole heatsink issue. Um, and, you know, it's like, that. that is an issue that I'm so used to seeing just everywhere. Like... Most AM3 Plus motherboards have a VRM cooling issue. Most X79 boards had a VRM cooling issue. Most AM, most AM4 boards have a VRM cooling issue. I can pretty much guarantee it. I've not tested a lot of them, but I'm like 99% sure that if I went through all the other boards at this price point, I wouldn't like, this one might shut down. The other ones will just, a lot of the other ones I imagine would just keep going until the like, basically until they melt themselves. Um, which I think is a worse scenario to be in than board shutting down. Ultimately, if the board shuts down because you're hitting too high a temperature, that's a safety feature, right? It's protecting the motherboard from incurring permanent damage. Whereas there's other motherboards out there which they'll run 150 degrees on the VRM, perfectly happy. Um, and, you know, everything will melt and, like, fail prematurely, but hey, at least it didn't crash. Uh -huh. So... That's a, yeah, like, it needs a bigger heatsink. And I think this is going to be true for every motherboard running this 4 plus 3 phase VRM. It's electrically, it's a great 4 plus 3. And really, I don't even care about the plus 3 part. The, the, the V-Core VRM portion of this, uh, you know, for 1.373 volts, it holds 3.9 gigahertz, which I'm, I wasn't aware that this chip could actually do that clock at that low a voltage. Um, but it can, as this VRM has just proved. So I'm going to be also retesting the chip on the Tai Chi to just check that, you know, if the Tai Chi can do that same clock at an even lower voltage, or if this is just the floor for this CPU. And Gigabyte just did a really good job with the filtering side of this motherboard, as well as the power plane, 
which the power plane on this board is a lot better than like the, that's the problem here i've tested three motherboards and one of them is really bad one of them is really good and one of them is this <laughs> so you know it's just like i don't know where this falls on the spectrum because my spectrum is like garbage and well best board on like best vrm that am that you can find on am4 um so, so that's a problem, you know. It, it's like, ultimately, I don't think this is the worst thing ever. It just needs the extra airflow. And Gigabyte also needs to put out an update to add LLC settings to this. Because I found out this board, that this CPU runs 3.9 gigahertz at 1.373 volts because this board drops 60 millivolts going from idle to load, and that's measured right behind the CPU socket. So I, I do actually have a wire going to the CPU socket so that I could measure core voltage um, with a multimeter and yeah it it drops 60 millivolts going from idle to load which is not great and they just need to put LLC settings in a BIOS update because the thing is the voltage controller on this board the ISL95712 supports LLC it has like four or five LLC options built into the chip so it's just a matter of somebody going and adding a, you know, LLC setting into the BIOS. And then, then this board could probably hit another 50 megahertz higher. Uh, instead of just 3.9, it would do 3.95 or something. Which, that would be, you know, that, that would be an improvement. That, that would bump it up uh, again on the, on the overall sort of my views of the board. Um... Honestly, 60 millivolts go, going from idle to full load is not the worst thing I've ever seen, so I, I'm still not that sad about it. And the board can run 3.9 gigahertz. So, you know, it it's like, I find it acceptable. Um, the thing is, I really need to test it's like, I, I think the prime competitor for this board is like the Strix F, uh, the X370-F board from Asus. And that board is 25 quid more expensive, but that one has, on paper, a significantly better VRM. At the same time, it has a heatsink that looks like it has even less surface area than this one. So, <laughs> I have, you know, it's like, yeah, sure, your your VRM is another 5, 7, 10 watts more efficient, but if the heatsink sucks, um, you know, I wonder. I, I wonder if it'll actually help, <laughs> because ultimately... You know, if you cover a v if you cover the world's best VRM in a blanket, it'll still overheat because it's in not being cooled at all. So, yeah, um, I, I I don't really have a verdict for you. You know, make up your own mind. Are you are you willing to, you know, save twenty like? Are you willing to buy this motherboard and then spend time figuring out how to cool the VRM? Or do you just want to spend more money on a motherboard that doesn't need the whole, uh, you know, that won't require you to figure out what to do about the VRM temperature? Because this one will shut down on you if you let it overheat. Um, but if you don't let it overheat, it's respectable, except for the lack of LLC settings. So, yeah. Um, that's pretty much all I have to say about it. <laughs> There's not really much else. Um, but but ultimately, you know, it's like I've... Well, I, I've, I've made up my mind. I, I think I've made it abundantly clear. This video is awkward because I don't really have that many talking points. Anyway, um, I would like to thank Gigabyte for sending this board in. No, like... I don't know if they knew that I was gonna like probably end up talking about this, but I really wanted to test this board because I knew about the four plus three phase VRM on it, um, and I, like, it's one thing to look at the paper, right, to do the math and look on the paper and be like, well, this is pretty bad, and then actually test it in real life and find out, well, it is pretty bad, but it's not as bad as it could be. It's by far not the worst thing I've ever tested. Um, and honestly, I'm actually kind of impressed that it ran 3.9 gigahertz at all. Like, I was fully prepared to tell you that this board runs 3.8, right? And it ran 3.9 once you fix the VRM cooling issues, which that is, that's easy, right? Like, you just need to find a fan. And if you buy a Ryzen 1700 or a 1600 or a 1400, you'll get a free fan with it. And if you want to run 3.9 gigahertz, you won't be using this heat, this fan 
on your CP, like, you won't be using this fan anyway, so you will have it spare. Um, and if you have an AIO installed, you know, it literally is just a matter of, like, zip-tying the fan in this area, and you'll be fine, thermally. Um, if you're using a tower cooler, then, then you're going to have bigger issues that, uh, um, you know, I'd have to look into, but I don't really have a bunch of tower, tower coolers to figure out how, how you would deal with that. But, um, yeah, you know, it's... It is what it is, so thank you Gigabyte for sending the board in. Um, I'm still going to be using it in my daily rig because I do love the way it looks. And uh, thanks to Alza for, you know, um, also helping with the acquisition of the board, so to speak. Uh, it's really weird how that works out. But yeah, thanks to alza.co.uk and Gigabyte for basically uh, providing the board. Uh, Alza is a big online retailer for basically all of Europe for computer hardware, and they do a lot of extreme overclocking stuff like deleted CPUs, bin CPUs, LN2 pots. So, you know, you should probably check them out if you're looking for those kinds of things in Europe. And uh, that's it in terms of everybody I have to thank. So if you would like to support what I do here with actually hardcore overclocking, I have a PayPal, a Patreon, and shirts. You can find a link to all of that down in the description below. Um, and don't forget, today is Friday, so I'm going to be on the over, uh, OC show uh, in like an hour, I think. So that that's just like, like you should probably go check that out because it's a live stream and it's on Twitch. And I'll put a link down in the comments about that. So that is it for this video. Thank you for watching. If you have any questions or comments, you can leave them in the comments down below. And see you next time.